Whether you want to be more self-sufficient or survive the apocalypse with your goats, this is everything you need to know about feeding your goats without the feed store. I've set this video up so you can take screenshots throughout to kind of work as your notes, but also down below in the description I've got thehomesteaderschronicle.com. That is an article I wrote about this beforehand. It's basically the same thing, just with fewer graphics, and it's about 7,000 words, so bring your coffee before you start. Also, I used that article to link all of my sources, so if you're like, ooh, that seems a little bit off, make sure you check that out. You can fact check me there or maybe learn something cool and interesting from those sources. In this, I'm gonna talk about how much feed goats need, how much that feed traditionally cost you from the feed store, what you're gonna get in exchange from that through meat, milk, or what they pack, plus some simple goat nutrition, which feeds to grow for your animals, how much space it takes to actually grow those feeds, and then the total cost to grow your own goat feed at home on your homestead. I'll go into more detail on this later, but basically your goat needs hay, alfalfa, forage, or browse. They don't have to have all of that. They just need one of those or some combination as the basis of their diet. If you've got a high performing goat or you've got a goat who is bred, to take in a lot of concentrates or grains or feeds, you're gonna need to feed that too. It's not meant to replace your hay alfalfa forage, it's meant as a supplement to go on top of it. This concentrate is usually gonna be between two and four cups per goat per day. You can absolutely feed less than that. You can feed none of it if you want, but that is usually what most uh, producers are giving their animals. Generally speaking, it's gonna be between a half pound and one pound. Usually a half pound is for the smaller breeds and one pound is for the larger breeds but sometimes a half pound is for non-working animals and one pound is for very hard-working animals or high producers. Let's talk hay needs. For this, I am specifically talking about hay or alfalfa. This is dry matter. It is not what your animals are getting from the pasture or what they are getting from the forest, okay? So for your dry matter, they're gonna need about 2% of their weight in this dry matter per day. So take your goat's weight and multiply that by 7.3 to get the annual amount that your goat needs. Generally speaking, a 50 pound goat needs about a pound of dry forage, whereas a 150 pound goat is gonna get three pounds, and then a 400 pound goat, which is kind of rare, but it happens, is gonna get eight pounds per day. I'm gonna use a 100 pound goat for my example here because that's pretty common for like your small milk goats. Uh, you can go ahead and double this number if you have something like a boar or a Kiko goat. So 100 pounds is a nice flat number, 200 is a nice easy number too, so just double it if you need to. Take your goat's weight times 0.2, and that's your hay that they need for the day, and then take your goat's weight times 7.3 to get your hay for a year. So a 100 pound goat needs about 730 pounds of hay per year. Loosely baled grass hay could weigh as little as 30 pounds per bale, whereas tightly packed alfalfa could be 100 or even 120 pounds per bale. But for this example, I'm just gonna say 50 to 75 pounds. So for that 100 pound goat, as the example, we're gonna say 10 to 15 bales per goat per year. At three to four dollars per bale, that's 30 to 60 dollars per year per goat. At five to eight dollars per bale, that's 50 to 120 dollars. At 10 to 12 dollars per bale, that's 100 to 180 per year. And at 15 to 17 dollars per bale, you're looking at 150 to 255 dollars per goat per year. I forgot to mention this in the other videos on this series. I wish I could go back and change that but you are going to pay significantly more for hay from your feed store than if you go directly to a farmer. So places like Murdoch's, Rural King, Orschlin, Tractor Supply, it's gonna be a lot, lot higher than your local farmer. For example, here in Northwestern Montana, I have seen feed store hay going for as much as $24 a bale compared to straight from the farmer at closer to $10. The difference in all that is a convenience tax. If you drop in at a farmer's house and ask them to drop everything they're doing to sell you a $10 bale of hay, and then you do that two or three times a week, you're not gonna be welcome there anymore. A feed store is happy to sell you any amount at any time. For that sweet farm discount, you need to buy just once or twice a year, show up exactly when they ask you to, buy it all at once, and then store your own hay. Okay, so calculating our grain costs from the feed store, we're going to run with that 100 pound goat example. That goat is going to need about 182 pounds of grain per year. Each bag is about 50 pounds, so we're going to say three and a half bags per goat per year. $12 a bag is 42 a year. $15 a bag is $52 a year. $20 a bag is $70 a year. 
And finally, $30 a bag is about $105 per year per goat. What a goat needs is a lot more fickle than what most producers and homesteaders are willing to admit. I've seen goats fat, sleek, and shiny off of browse, which is food that they find for themselves in the woods or weedy pastures. And then I've seen goats that get skinny, shaggy, and miserable under these same conditions. And the same goes for goats that are on beautiful seeded pastures with irrigation and have a constant supply of grain. It really is nuanced, and I think that goats, like people, can have different results on the same diet. With that little disclaimer out of the way, browse like briars, grasses, trees, weeds, and even wild fruits and nuts will keep the average homestead goat in good condition, so long as they have enough of it. These goats are just living to clean up your land, gain a modest amount of weight, maybe produce a little milk for your family, or have a few kids every year. Your working or high production goat will generally have more needs. For instance, a well-bred meat goat will gain almost a half pound a day, and a well-bred dairy goat makes up to a gallon and a half of milk a day. And you can't forget your athletes like pack goats who are packing 50 to 70 pounds of gear or meat out of the mountains in the summertime. They're burning a lot more calories, so they need some help with their supplements. Goats have other purposes besides meat, milk, packing, and clearing land. Some breeds are valuable for their fibers, but I'm not as knowledgeable in that area. So if that's your expertise, I would love to hear how much to expect per goat per year. Also, there's value in reproduction too. Most goats are pregnant for about five months and twins are pretty common. With that said, it is possible to breed for triplets and quadruplets and a lot of farms have successfully taken this approach. So now let's get into what you get in return for giving your goats all that feed, which takes either a lot of your time or a lot of your money. Most goats here in the U.S. are butchered around six months old, and you'll expect 48 to 50 percent of their live weight in meat. At six months old, most goats are around 50 to 60 pounds, so that meat is going to be somewhere in the 20 to 30 pound range. Now, in places like South Africa and New Zealand, they tend to butcher at nine months old, and to me personally, that just makes a lot more sense. Nine months old is when you start to have sexual maturity for some breeds and you get a better picture of the quality of the animal. So keeping them until nine months old makes it much easier to determine who should stay in the breeding program and who should go to the freezer. It's much easier to judge an animal based on who they are today rather than what you think they will be three months Some goats from now. can get to 400 pounds, which could get you around 200 pounds of meat, but it usually takes two to three years to get there, and unless you have a large acreage, that's not usually a feasible option. Three to five months gets you the most efficient feed to meat ratio, meaning you're giving them the least amount of feed for the most amount of meat. And six months is pretty common in the U.S., though I have seen places that do the three to five months. You can expect about 25 to 50 pounds of live weight at three to five months, which means about 10 to 25 pounds of meat. And then waiting until about a year old is much less efficient with the feed cost, but you get 40 to 50 pounds of meat. Most places that do this are pasture-based rather than intensive feeding. As you can imagine, breed has a lot to do with it. For this data in front of you right now, I asked several people about their goats and most of them just gave me their best guesses. Just when I think that everything that can be shared online has already been shared, I am so, so wrong. I found very little data on the different breeds growth rates. So if you raise goats and you are regularly getting them on the scale about once a month, I would love to hear from you. Please comment below. I'm sure other people would like to hear from you as well. All of these breeds with these sizes and numbers are based on the goats at six months old. Please don't put a lot of stock into this because like I said, I don't have that many credible studies to fall back on and really be sure about it. But this is just a good guide to get you started, okay? Most meat breeds are going to weigh 30 to 70 pounds at six months old, which means you get 15 to 30 pounds of meat. So for every four to seven pounds that you put into that animal, you're going to get about a pound of meat back. Goats have a moderate feed conversion rate. They take about the same amount of time to mature as a rabbit or a heritage breed chicken, but with almost double the feed. On the other hand, they are two or three times as efficient as a cow with half the gestation period and half or a third of the growing period. Before we move on, I want to say that when I talk about feed conversion ratios, I might be talking about it differently than what you're used to hearing. I want to clarify that. I am specifically talking about the pounds of food that an animal eats. So if an animal eats two pounds of hay, one pound of grain, and then eats four pounds of forage from the pasture, I would say that animal ate seven pounds of feed. Some people don't count that food that comes from the pasture, and they would say that that animal only ate three pounds of food. Of course, this is much more difficult to track, but I think pasture space is valuable and therefore it should be counted. Typically, pasture-raised animals take more feed, but the perk is that it's cheaper to feed them overall. 
This disconnect in the verbiage is why a lot of people talk inputs, which an input is the fee that you directly give to the animal, and it does not count things like your pasture or whatever they find on their own. Your takeaway from this should be that basically a goat who is eating fresh browse will eat more food and take longer to get big, but they're doing it themselves. Meanwhile, a goat who is eating hay and grains requires a lot more of your labor, but they will be finished faster. Now I think you're about to see the real value in a goat. Most dairy goats will make two to three quarts of milk daily, which is between a half and three quarters of a gallon for nine to 10 months out of the year. So they are turning two and a half pounds of hay and maybe a half to one pound of feed into four to six pounds of milk. In case you didn't know, milk is 87% water. That's why they are literally able to output more than they input. Packing is a seriously underrated purpose that goats are exceptionally good at. Most horses and mules can carry up to 20% of their body weight. Meanwhile, a goat can comfortably carry 30. That means that a 250 pound goat can carry 75 pounds per trip. If you've ever been hunting in the Rocky Mountains, you can appreciate that. Sure, they do carry less than a horse or a mule, but most horses and most mules eat three to four tons per hay each year, whereas goats eat just under one ton. Goats are also more sure-footed, which means they can help you out even in those steep and rocky ravines. Overall, goats are a great asset for people with smaller properties or budgets who want to go hunting or take good hiking trips. In this next section, I'm going to talk about how you can reduce whatever your goats need to eat. But before I do that, I want to talk about what wild goats eat so you can kind of compare the two and see what your options are. Most goats choose higher elevations in the summer, partially to avoid predators and also because of the vegetation there, and then they go to lower elevation in the winter to escape deep snow. These highest altitudes usually make browse more scarce, so they eat foods that most domestic farmers wouldn't think about giving their goats. At higher elevations, most goats search for lichen, mosses, wildflower shoots, and sparse grasses. In the forested mountains, they browse on pines, firs, and juniper trees, and they tend to prefer the younger trees, but they will also eat the lower branches, fallen branches, fallen trees, and the bark if necessary. In the lower elevations, they go for saplings, grasses, leafy perennials, acorns, and some briars and bushes. A team of researchers followed a wild ibex herd and found that 85% of their diet came from home oak trees and only 15% consisted of forbs and grasses. So can you treat your domestic goats like wild goats? If you have enough land, especially forests, probably. I have Nigerian dwarf goats and in my first year of owning them here on our current property, I did not fence them in at all. They gleefully free ranged, they had free choice hay, but they strongly preferred the native grasses and evergreen saplings all over our property. Even with three and four feet of snow, they made pathways through the woods and helped themselves to the younger trees. And as the snow built up, they had better access to those higher branches. My two goats only ate about 60 pounds of hay or alfalfa during a two month period and most of that was wasted. Goats love to throw their hay around like some expensive confetti rather than eating it. So when they free ranged, they ate about 15 pounds of hay each and that was per month. They sourced 60% of their diets all on their own, saving me about 150 pounds of hay each month for the both of them. When I first brought the two goats home, they went through one five pound mineral block in two weeks. After that, they slowed down a lot though. The next five pound block lasted them almost five months. I think they had a little bit of a deficiency to start with and once they fixed it, they stopped relying on the mineral block as much. And their horns grew unbelievably fast. That was really reassuring to me that they were getting the good nutrients that they needed. I did end up building a fence for my goats and then rotationally grazing them on our property for two main reasons. Number one is that goats will eat your landscaping starting with your flowers. Those first few years that we were here, I was way more concerned about keeping my two under two human kids taken care of, but now I'm finally able to breathe a bit and the aesthetics of our little homestead are starting to become a lot more important to me. Next, my sweet neighbors uh, started giving our goats little treats every time they rode by on their ATVs to visit us, which we loved and the goats loved and the neighbors loved it. It was a great time but it did not take long for those goats to put two and two together and start hiking up to the neighbor's cabin to beg for more treats on their porch. So after I got some calls from my neighbors to come get my goats, I knew that their days of freedom were over. Anyways, it is probably for the best because we do have a lot of predators like bears and mountain lions and wolves. So keeping them pinned up has probably saved their goats, the goats lives a few times anyway. But yeah, if I was ever in a survival situation, I would probably turn them loose again. I had really good success with that before, and I'm pretty confident that they could fend for themselves if they had to. 
Beyond that, you have a few other options to reduce your goat feed needs, which I'm going to get into now. The cheapest and most efficient way is the get it yourself method. Of course, you can just turn your goats loose. That's an option. You can put your goats in a normal pasture and just leave them in there 24 seven if it's large enough. Um, if you have a smaller property, I highly encourage rotational grazing. Even if you don't have a smaller property, I like rotational grazing. Um, you section off your field into smaller parcels and then move your goats to a new space several times a day if it's a really small area or once a day if you're sectioning off larger areas. And another option that people don't think about that is really fast and easy to do is a goat tractor. Just as you can make a movable box or crate for chickens and rabbits, you can also make one for goats. Four metal panels would work. A fix four small, maybe two eight foot and two 16 foot cattle panels in a rectangle. So that way you can just move this around your pasture as needed. One person can do this. You don't need a tractor to do it. That would work pretty well. Another option is to fold the panels in half like arches and then line three or four, maybe five or six of them up to make a tractor that's enclosed from the top as well. I don't recommend keeping your goats in these panels all day, but instead for maybe a few hours in the morning and a few hours in the evening. Then I would let them go back to the barn and use their usual paddock overnight and during the heat of the day so they can stretch out, exercise, and chew their cud with a lot more elbow room. Tethering is another good option, though it is very time intensive and I don't always recommend this one because of that. Uh, basically, you tie your goats on a lunge line or a high line so that way they can graze, but you only want to do this when you're watching them closely the entire time they're outside because they are way more susceptible to neighborhood dog and wildlife attacks and they're very likely to tangle or strangle themselves, so they need your supervision at all times. They are seriously little children who need to be watched all the time. Move them a few times a day, and if you have two goats, alternate tying them so one is free and one is tied. If you have three goats, tie two and let one loose, alternating who gets to be free. And if you have four or more goats, tie all of them but one or maybe all of them because if you let two or more goats loose, those two will venture off on their own and it's, they're gonna leave behind your tethered goats. That's not really a good idea. Goats prefer to be in the woods and that means that you're gonna need to help untangle them from the trees too. I like to tie mine out when I was already outside getting firewood or cleaning up the woods around the house so that way I was close by at all times. But like I said, this is really time consuming if you're not gonna be home all the time. I am being so serious when I say that tying your goats out is dangerous and you really do need to watch them the whole time. If you follow me on TikTok, you know that last summer I ended up screaming, running barefoot, holding a shotgun, chasing after a mountain lion that was circling Daisy, our main goat, last year. I had her tied up down at the round pen and this mountain lion showed up and he was trying to get a hold of her and she was swinging her horns to keep him back and I was just screaming, trying to get him off that goat, get him away. Uh, I fired one warning shot. He understood what that meant. He ran off in the woods and thankfully he didn't bother anything. We hazed him. He never came back. Um, and hopefully he tells all of his little forest friends that there's a crazy lady who lives here and to leave her goats alone. If you do need to keep your goats pinned up all the time, you can always supplement with whatever browse or forage or trees that you want to gather and then give to your goats. I will cut down little saplings that need to come down around our house because of the fire risk and I will just throw them right in for my goats. They eat pretty much all of it except for the trunk. They'll eat the bark off but I'm left with the trunk and then I'll take that trunk out and I will put it on our burn barrel, uh, burn pile and we will burn that in the spring right before the snow melts. I also give my goats and my rabbits actually a lot of invasive weeds because that's usually one of the first things they go for, especially the Canadian thistle, which I love because when I put my goats out on pasture, that is usually one of the very first things they target. So that makes it possible for me to walk around barefoot and actually enjoy myself and enjoy the property. Another great way to reduce your feed inputs is to actually rent your goats out. Since they like to target the sticky underbrush and dense thickets, they are incredible at removing wildfire hazards. So in some places, people will rent out their herds. Uh, I've seen 2,000 animal herds rent out for as much as $30,000 a month. Seriously, you can get paid to let someone else's property feed your goats. And if you're wondering why, that's because goats are eco-friendly, they are much quieter than machinery, oftentimes they are cheaper than machinery. Uh, they don't put giant tire or track ruts in the ground and they are not a hazard to creeks, parks, or community centers. It's really popular in suburban areas where machinery would not be welcomed, especially places that 
are supposed to be quiet like golf courses, they will usually rent goats instead of the heavy machinery to clear out a lot of the land. And most people don't mind looking over and seeing a goat, whereas they would be upset if they saw an excavator. If you're in the business of breeding and raising goats, you know that one buck will likely eat one and a half to two times as much as one doe. So not keeping a buck on your property can drop your feed cost by 600 to 2,000 pounds of hay every single year. So if you're on a budget or you don't want to go through the hassle of growing that much extra feed, consider eliminating the buck when possible. There are drawbacks to this. Bucks may protect their does from predators and introducing new bucks may make your herd more susceptible to picking up new diseases. On the bright side though, it's less feed for you and you don't have the danger uh, or the risk of keeping a sometimes dangerous, hormonal, stinky, or destructive buck on your property. We now have the option of using artificial insemination, which is basically an injectable straw full of semen, or the low-tech route of sharing a buck. Usually what you would do is offer your neighbor the first choice of the new doelings in exchange for using their buck to service your herd. They get to have a good quality doe, and then you don't have to feed a smelly buck for 11 months out of the year. One thing about goats is that they know how to throw a party with your hay. In my anecdotal experience, giving your goats hay directly on the ground or in a bucket that's easy for them to pull out means they will waste 80% and eat 20. If you make a creep feeder or a slow feeder, they will eat closer to 80% and waste 20%. They have to work a bit harder to get that feed out, otherwise they're just going to pull it all out and then waste the majority of it by trampling it, laying on it, and then pooping or peeing on it. So, to put it nicely, goats don't give an F about your budget. So to nicely sum up this whole how to reduce your goat feed section, I would say that if I'm in a survival situation, I would let my goats free range all year long again. I would cut and cure enough hay to supplement about 20 pounds of hay per adult goat per month. That's a little bit overkill, but I never want to see an animal go hungry. I have three breeder does right now and one meat weather at the moment, and I'm expecting six new kids each year, which at the time, at the moment I am selling all of those. I don't plan on keeping any more goats. So I would put aside about 960 pounds of hay for the adults and 700 to 900 pounds for the kids if I chose to keep them, which I'm not. So now I'm going to talk about what your goats need to eat plant-wise, and then I'll get into the more nutrient side of things right after that. Browse is usually your like wilder plants. So goats like to find foods that grow at or above their heads and take a lot more effort to chew. That's actually preferable and I'll talk about that more in a minute. Goats love to climb up for their meals and rear up to snag quick bites. And part of this is because of the nutritional profile of these items, which again, I'll get into in a minute. And because they are less likely to ingest parasites this way since they're eating so far off the ground. The further that the food is from the ground, the less likely parasites are to infect it. This is why ancient wheat varieties are usually cleaner with fewer parasites. They have longer stems, and these longer stems mean that the plants have less energy to put into making the wheat berries. So you've got fewer wheat berries per plant, but the plants are cleaner. Commercial wheats are much, much shorter with larger heads, but they're more prone to parasites, which is why we end up making uh, GMO versions, which are um, immune to things like Roundup and herbicides and pesticides. My friend Kayla is actually writing an article on GMOs right now for the Homesteaders Chronicle, which is our passion project we share. So when that comes out, you really need to read it. It's gonna be a good one. So to get back on track, most goats can browse up to six feet over their heads, which is twice the height of their bodies. And this reaching up motion stands them up on their hind legs a lot, which is great for their body conditioning. If you've ever picked up a goat, you know that most of their weight is on the front half of the animal. Actually, if you've ever had a boar or a garnica goat step on your feet, you really understand this concept. The shoulders are heavy, there's a ton of blood in the chest cavity, that adds weight. And then they've got their necks and their heads all on those front legs too. So there's a lot of weight up there. About two thirds of their weight is on their front legs. So because of this, standing on their back legs builds up some muscle in the hindquarters, which leads to a much more balanced animal. Plus that extra muscle on their haunches is a great way for them to store up energy, which is crucial for breeding season for the bucks and kidding season for the does when they are much more likely to drop weight. I intentionally built my feeder to be above my goat's heads for the purpose of keeping them in this upright posture. Now note that it is possible for them to swing a leg up there and get that caught, but I believe the risk is worth the benefit of this upright positioning. Grasses, hays, and legumes are a lot more palatable, which is usually not quite as good for the goats, and the nutritional profile is usually not as ideal. 
Legumes like alfalfa, especially young alfalfa, is slightly more nutritious than many grasses and hay varieties. Eating these items requires goats to graze, which puts their heads down and does not do as much to build their hindquarters up. Most people have to give their goats this type of forage because browse is not as readily available, me included. It will absolutely sustain life, but it's not the goat's preferences and it often needs supplementation, which is fine. If at all possible, I highly recommend testing your hay or your alfalfa at your local extension office in addition to your soil. This will give you so much good information about what they're getting, what they need more of, and it's going to make sure that you are supplementing accurately. Don't supplement blindly, supplement based on testing or proven needs. Grains, often called concentrates, are the complete opposite of browse and forages, nutritionally speaking. Concentrates are high in energy, high in protein, and low in fiber. While a goat can live exclusively on forages or browse, goats cannot live on grains alone. This should make up only a small part of their diet, and when it is added to their diet, you should not take away any of the forages or browse. It should go on top of it. Most goat concentrates are made of corn, oats, brewer's grains, and slash or soybeans. High producing animals really need grains to get more calories and nutrition into their bodies. If we expect animals to grow unnaturally fast, I'm saying that sarcastically, um, and make an unnatural amount of milk and do a lot of physical labor like packing, then we need to feed them an unnatural diet to meet those high demands. Man, I need someone to stand over my shoulder and keep me in line because I missed two full sections of this that I wanted to share with you. So I'm going to go ahead and share those now and then we will get into the nutritional stuff. That nutritional stuff will make a lot more sense once you understand this part. If you don't care about why this stuff works, go ahead and skip it. I've put timestamps throughout this whole video so you can just get to the nitty gritty, but I think this is really interesting. Goats have four major sections of their stomach called compartments or chambers. First, the goat uses their upper lips to selectively browse their forage options, which cattle and horses can't really do, and then they use their teeth to snag and bite off their food. They then briefly chew the food, coat it in saliva, and then swallow it, sending it down the esophagus, through the reticulum, and into the rumen. The rumen is oxygen-free, and it's a lot like a fermentation vat. This is where fermentation begins. All the microorganisms start breaking down the food here. Most of the food particles float to the top, and that's where these microorganisms are fermenting it. The reticulum is basically a pump, and it squeezes all that stuff that is floating at the top, turning it into a bolus. This is actually the cud, which you've seen goats chewing on before. The cud travels up the esophagus for the goat to chew again before swallowing once more. Basically, the reticulum is the bouncer who decides who is small enough to stay inside the club. If you're too big, you're getting chewed up again until you're a more digestible size. The next time you're hanging out with your goats, watch their necks carefully. You can actually see the bolus, which is the cud, travel up and down their necks, kind of like an Adam's apple. I don't want to hear a single cross word about how goat cud is gross because I know some of you guys are willingly out here eating guacamole. And you cannot convince me that does not look and taste like chewed up grass. <laughs> anyway, carry on with the rest of the video. And if you've ever had a goat stretch her neck up to greet you, she's probably burped right in your face. That's because of all that gas that this fermentation process is making. So if your goat ever stops bur burping, she will get sick with bloat and this gas will build up in an incredibly painful way. Bloat is really deadly too. So next, the feed is finally small and dense and heavy enough to fall to the floor of the rumen and then travel into the honeycombed reticulum. The honeycomb reticulum pumps <clears throat> pumps blood food into the omasum. The omasum Omasum? I don't know. Takes all the water out of the slurry of food and absorbs as many nutrients as possible. This is where all of the volatile fatty acids are absorbed, which gives your goat all of their energy. From here, the particles are forced into the true stomach. This works similarly to the human stomach, and it uses hydrochloric acid to break down and digest the now dry food pieces. Finally, the food travels through the intestines where the rest of the nutrients are absorbed into the body and then the waste finally passes out of the goat. Here are three crazy things about goat nutrition that most people don't know. Number one is that calcium steals zinc. Calcium significantly reduces the zinc absorption in the goat's body. It actually does this for humans too. It doesn't totally block the zinc, but it does decrease the rate of bioavailability. This is both true for humans and goats. The two minerals bind together in the gastrointestinal tract, making an insoluble complex. 
Zinc deficiency in goats looks a lot like flaky skin, dry skin, ugly dull coats, or coats that look like they're supposed to be in the winter time even though it's summer and they just don't look sleek and happy like they normally do. It also looks like skin lesions or sometimes hair loss. It also stunts growth, stunts their reproduction, reproduction abilities, and significantly weakens their immune system. It's usually not fatal, but this weakened immune system could mean that it's fatal for other reasons. If you're feeding your goat a diet rich in calcium like alfalfa, be intentional about your zinc supplementation. Salt blocks or mineral licks are a great source for helping out here, and other options include supplementing with the liquid zinc or altering your feeding schedule just a little bit. Since I usually feed 50% alfalfa and 50% timothy hay, um, my goats get a lot of calcium. Something that I have done to try to fix this is by offering them salt blocks with water, of course, while they're out of the barn and on pasture. These wilder plants have a lower calcium content, so I am betting that that zinc from the mineral block is getting better absorbed. This is not scientifically proven, but it's an option if you want to try something out. Number two is that goats actually make their own baking soda. When goats are eating rougher, less palatable foods like briars, limbs, and stimmy greens, it takes a while for them to actually eat it. This is a good thing. As the goat chews and rechews this, they produce sodium bicarbonate to break this down. You'll sometimes see them foaming at the mouth and this is why. The more that a goat chews, the more bicarbonate they make, and this stuff naturally neutralizes their stomach so that way those fermentation gases don't build up too much and get completely out of hand. The less that a goat chews, the less bicarbonate they make, and the easier it is for their body to have way too many fermentation gases building up, which causes bloat. And if you're not fast enough, that is deadly. Grass, alfalfa, grain, fruits, and many vegetables are highly palatable, meaning that the goats don't get the chance they need to make this bicarbonate. So if you're feeding your goat highly palatable feed, set a pan of baking soda in their enclosure. Don't mix it into their water and don't mix it into their minerals. Keep it in a separate bowl. bowl. Goats are pretty intuitive and they will use the baking soda as needed. It's really fascinating if you want to just sit and watch them sometime because if they eat a lot of grain, they will go over and they will get into that baking soda to help themselves out. Oh, and please do not take away your goat's minerals or baking soda because they are using them a lot. Yes, mineral blocks with added molasses are like candy to your goats, so your goats might get carried away with that. So if that's bothering you, switch to molasses-free minerals if you think they're overdoing it. If your goats are still eating a lot of the minerals or baking soda, it's because they actually need it. Please let them have it. So how effective is baking soda at treating bloat? Well, the Iranian Journal of Applied Animal Science tested it with 42 goats and sheep, and they gave all 42 animals breads, rice, fruits, and vegetables. Then they gave all of the animals sodium bicarbonate, which is baking soda, to ease the bloat, and 40 out of 42 recovered. Another study was later conducted with 40 different goats. Every goat was given high volumes of grain, and they gave half of the herd baking soda, and the other half, which was the control group, <clears throat> which was the control group, did not get baking soda. Most of the baking soda group lived, while every single goat in the control group died. Number three is that selenium deficiencies are pretty common in the U.S. and a lot of people don't know about it. This is something that is missing from a lot of people's soil and if your goat is not getting enough selenium, they are going to have low birth rates, they're not going to get pregnant at all, or they're going to give birth to stillborn babies. Um, this is not something that a lot of people know about and because of that, I highly recommend checking out this map from USGS. I've got it linked down below into the description so please check that out and look at your individual county it tells you everything about your selenium deficiencies whether you have that or not plus it tells you a lot about other concentrations of elements in your county oh my gosh we're finally back on track this is what your goats need to eat nutritional wise first is carbs and crude fiber followed by fatty acids protein minerals and vitamins Digestible carbs are called carbs. This is where the majority of their calories come from. Indigestible carbs are called fibers. There is less calories in this, but this is very necessary to keep the goat's digestive system flowing. The foods that your goat will naturally find on their own, especially like the wild plants, trees, and shrubs are really high in this. So this is gonna be mostly taken care of for you without you thinking about it or worrying about it or adding any kind of supplement. 
Goats need at least 12% fiber and 49% carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are almost never listed on the feed bags. So to find this percentage, add up all the ingredient percentages and then take that number and subtract it from 100. What you're left with is the carbohydrate percentage. It will likely be around 50%. When you need to beef up or supplement your goat's diet, you're usually taking away from the carbohydrates. Most goats need 3-5% to fat and this is necessary to absorb all the nutrients and vitamins that your goat is already ingesting. This is something the fatty acids are usually what's added into feed concentrates to help your goat gain weight and better maintain their health. Goats, like other ruminant animals, need protein quantity over protein quality. This is because the microorganisms in their rumens can actually make their own body protein. Plus, these ruminants do not store excess protein. Instead, the extra protein is burned as energy or it's eliminated as nitrogen via the kidneys. Because of this, it's important for them to have a constant supply of protein. Non-production goats need 11-12% to protein, which is pretty similar to the protein content of grass hay. High production, meaning meat, milk, or highly active goats need 14 to 16% protein. This is really similar to high quality alfalfa. How convenient and wonderful. <laughs> so the next time you're shopping for goat feed, check the backs of the feed bags. Not all feed bags will tell you the ingredients, but for those that do, check the first ingredient. Many high quality goat feeds have dehydrated alfalfa meal as the number one ingredient. Many backyard goats are actually deficient in copper. They need 10 to 80 parts per million per day. Overfeeding copper is not really an issue because for the most part, a healthy goat will be able to offset this as needed. But copper is the reason why many farmers don't keep goats and sheep together. Too much copper does not affect the goats, whereas exceeding 20 parts per million will kill a sheep. Don't forget that you can screenshot these slides or you can go to the description and click the link to the Homesteaders Chronicle. I have all of this information saved there. This is everything you need to know about the mineral and mineral content for your goats. This is a really good reference to have. As far as your vitamins go, it's always a good idea to get your soil and your forage tested by your local extension office if possible. Usually $20 a test there. If you try and do it online through a private company, that could be $700 to $1,000. So seriously, go check out your lo local extension agent. They have so much good information. Goats need vitamins A, C, D, E, and K, and they can make their own vitamin B if the rest of their diet is balanced. This is really heavily found in their wild forages and even more so in sprouted goods. So all of these leafy greens, vegetables, grains, seeds, fruits, all of it is going to be much, much richer when the plant is young. This is also true for your alfalfas and your grass. So if you're feeding forage only for a year, remember that goats are gonna eat about 2% of their body weight in forage every day. This is up to 4% in browse. So a 100 pound goat needs two pounds a day, which is equal to 730 pounds a year, which is 10 to 15 small square bales. A 200 pound goat needs four pounds per day, which is equal to 1,460 pounds per year, which is around 20 to 30 small square bales. So now how much space does it take to actually grow this forage? Here in Montana, you get almost two tons of hay per acre and right at two tons of alfalfa per acre. Meanwhile, in Indiana, you're getting almost three tons of hay per acre and three and a half tons of alfalfa per acre. If you can talk to a local farmer, that is going to be fantastic for figuring stuff out because you're gonna learn about how many cuttings they're doing, what kind of inputs they're putting on that field to get that kind of a yield, and what to expect because they're probably gonna give you a lot of really good information if you find the right one. I am not going to beat the autism allegations after this one because one of my favorite things when I'm doing when I drive around is I will look at a field and I will guess in my head about how many acres it is and then when I get home I will pull up Google Earth and I will use the measure tool to actually find exactly how many acres it is. And then when hay season rolls around I will guess about how many bales I think it's going to get and then afterwards I will actually count the bales if I'm a passenger and figure that up for myself. Some farmers are gonna be so thrilled that you're interested in what they're doing and they're gonna give you all the information that they can. And then some of them are gonna be maybe offended if you ask them uh, about their acreage and how much hay they're getting because really you can go through and figure out what they're selling it for and then you can basically figure out what they're getting paid. And a lot of farmers are a little bit funny about their money, which I understand. So that's that may not be an option for you, which is why I am saying that you can 
count the hay bales per the acre and figure things out on your own without the farmer's input. Please, whatever you do, do not approach an 80-year-old farmer who is just enjoying his coffee at the local corner store and tell him that you are checking out his farm through satellites. That is a fight and a problem you don't want to have. <laughs> okay, so how much space does it actually take to grow all of that forage? So each 75 pound goat, which is usually your Nigerian or Ankara goats, are going to need a tenth of an acre of forage. A herd of three small goats needs a third of an acre. A 200 pound goat, which is usually your Kikos and boars, will need a third of an acre of forage. A herd of three large goats needs almost one full acre. Believe it or not, if your goats are free ranging or browsing for their own food, they're actually gonna need closer to 4% of their body weight in browse. 2.5% of this is for eating. It's slightly higher for the eating because there's a higher water content. 0.5% is for trampling and 1% is for your buffer. You need that buffer just to make sure that everyone is well fed. Most historical records show that the average person could cut about a half acre of hay every day. Personally, I have, uh, I found that's closer to a quarter of an acre, but then again, I also have kids and I've got all kinds of other things to worry about. It's not like there's a whole bunch of us going out and doing this all at once and someone's watching kids and someone's out cutting hay. I'm kind of doing all of it. So, you know, I'm going to say that in the real world, modern world, where you've got other things going on, probably a quarter of an acre is a safe estimate. Last fall, I cut my own hay with my hands, no tractor, and it took me probably two days to get all the hay that I wanted. I never weighed it. I wish I had gone through the trouble of weighing it, um, but I cut it, I cured it, I bundled it. Some of it I just threw loosely into the big box I showed you earlier for my goats, and that lasted my goats and my rabbits and even my chickens. I gave them a little bit, about a month and a half, maybe two months. So I was very pleased with how long that lasted for how little work I put into it. I did briefly talk about that on a YouTube short, so when you get done with this video, you can go check that out if that interests you. Now we can talk about a good goat feed formula. You can feed 100% good quality forage or browse or mostly forage and browse with some grain supplementation. Remember that your goat should always have 2-4% to of their body weight in forage or browse per day, and then you can add a half pound to a full pound of feed concentrate on top of that. Never take away from the forage to give them this concentrate. Goats with lower quality forage or very little browse likely need some added grains or concentrated feed. Goats who are expected to grow quickly or produce a lot of milk or do a lot of physical exercise like packing also need concentrated feeds. Remember that most goats are bred to depend on these extra calories or nutrients, so always ask about the feeding regimen when you're buying new goats so that way you're feeding them fairly. If you ever need to make changes in their diet, do it slowly and do it with a purpose. Protein, fat, and added calories, especially through carbs, are the primary focus of these concentrates. Some commercial concentrates also have a balance of added vitamins and minerals to avoid major deficiencies. If you are consistently feeding a commercial concentrate that has these added, you can skip the salt and mineral blocks because some of these are meant to be a complete diet. So for this example that I'm going to share over the next few slides, I'm going to use the following ingredients to make up our feed concentrate. Feel free to swap these ingredients out for others with similar nutritional profiles. You've got corn, which is 9% protein, 5% fat, 7% fiber, and 73% carbohydrates. Oats, which are 13% protein, 7% fat, 10% fiber, and 67% carbohydrates. Barley is 12% protein, 2% fat, 17% fiber, and 73% carbohydrates. Field peas are 23% protein, 3% fat, 28% fiber, and 60% carbohydrates. If you are thinking about lowering this to three ingredients, I strongly recommend you getting rid of the barley because it has the least to offer with the exception of the vitamins and minerals, and it takes up the most amount of space. Seriously, almost half of your feed space is taken up by barley. It's very inefficient as a grower. On that note, corn is pretty efficient. You need 45.6 pounds per small goat per year, and you need 91.25 pounds per large goat per year. So if you are assuming 4.5 tons of acre as a yield, and you are not secession showing, success. If you are not planting these one right after another, you are going to need 220 square feet for small goats, 440 square feet for large goats, 660 square feet for a herd of three small goats, or 1,320 square feet for a herd of three large goats. 
Assuming a 5,000 pound yield per acre, you are going to need almost 400 square feet of oats for a small goat, 794 square feet for a large goat, almost 1,200 square feet for a herd of three small goats, and 2,383 square feet for a herd of three large goats. Barley needs 993 square feet per small goat, 1,986 square feet per large goat, 2,979 square feet for a herd of three small goats, or 5,958 square feet for a herd of three large goats. It is so inefficient, but it's a great grain if you have the space and the time and the willingness to grow it. Finally, our field peas. We're going to get about two tons of field peas per acre. So that's almost 500 square feet per small goat, a thousand for a large goat, 1,500 for three small goats, and nearly 3,000 square feet for a herd of three large goats. So if you're feeding forage only, you need a tenth to a third of an acre per goat if you're feeding hay slash alfalfa, and you need between a fifth and two thirds of an acre per goat if you are feeding browse slash free ranging, meaning the goats are getting it themselves. Remember, your goats are gonna trample a lot, okay? Now we can finally total up all the space needed for our grains. In total, it is 2,106 square feet to grow all of the grains for one small goat, or 4,212 square feet to grow all of the grains for one large goat. So now we can combine those two figures. So it takes 6,462 square feet or 1 15th of an acre per small goat to grow all of their feed for the year. Or it takes 18,586 square feet or about 40% of an acre per large goat. And now that we know all of this, we can figure out what it costs to grow all of the feed on your homestead for the year for all of your goats. If you wanna know how I figured this up, go to the same section on my how to feed your rabbit without the feed store video. I have all of this done and I show you the math that it takes to calculate all of this. Spoiler alert, it takes forever. Also, I'm not sponsored or affiliated with uh, trueleafmarket.com. It's just a reliable source that has a lot of seed options and they ship to all 50 states so at the very most this is what you're going to pay for your seeds so if it's not cheaper in your area you can order through them and they will ship it to your house how awesome is that so it's $17.24 for five pounds you need about 1.87 pounds to feed one small goat for the year or 3.74 pounds to feed one large goat for the year that comes out to about 46 cents for a small goat or 92 cents for a large goat it costs $27.55 for five pounds of oats and you need 1.25 pounds to feed one small goat or 2.5 pounds to feed one large goat. That comes out to $6.88 for a small goat and $13.76 for a large goat. It costs $60.63 for 24 pounds of barley. You need 1.24 pounds for one small goat or 2.48 pounds for one large goat. This comes out to $3.15 for a small goat or $6.30 for a large goat. It's $8.21 for a pound of Austrian field peas. You need one tenth of a pound for one small goat or almost a fifth of a pound for one large goat. In total, it's gonna cost 83 cents for a small goat or $1.66 to feed a large goat. So the total cost to grow feed for one goat is $11.32 for a small goat or $22.64 for a large goat. The total upfront cost to buy all of your seed because you can't just buy exactly the amount of seeds you need. This is going to be about $113.63. A lot of this you can sprout, you can reuse, you can save it for another year, whatever you want to do, but it's nice to have. I know some people were upset in my other videos because I didn't talk about what it costs to own the land or what it costs to irrigate or what your property taxes are or what it's going to cost you to go through and fertilize it. And the reason why I didn't do that is because I don't want this to be a seven hour video. You know exactly what those costs are for your property. So that's very easy for you to just plug and chug that in. I don't know what that is and it can range wildly all across the country. So you are free to add that in and figure it up for you personally. I have given you the tools to get started. So that way you don't have to do all of this crazy math. You can just use what I've given you. So I hope that helps. 
Anyway, your total cost is going to be about $113.63 to buy all of the grain seeds, and some of those you might be able to use for a couple years. So your total cost is just, <laughs> I say that sarcastically, just your labor and about $114. And that $114 can actually cover you over the next years because seed saving is a thing and it's a great option, great way to get your money back and really save on the next few years. For instance, one ear of corn can have 800 seeds, which could be up to 800 new plants, and your barley plant could have up to 48 pieces on it, so up to 48 new plants. So each plant you get will give you at least a 48% return, return if they all germinate. Um, so planting, just for every 50 plants that you put out, just put out an extra one for the purpose of seed saving. That will take care of all of your needs for the next year. And uh, a couple of people asked if you need to specifically pull from cer certain plants or if you can just take a little bit off of each plant. I would prefer to take just a little bit of seed off of each plant. If you want to be nitpicky about it, that's a good option. If not, you can just save a few plants back just for seed saving. Definitely do your very, very favorite plants, whichever one are the highest yield. Uh, that's a good option for you. Oh, and people asked me about plant losses due to like wildlife, droughts, whatever. All of my figures are based on national average yield, so these losses have already been built into them, so you don't need to worry about it beyond that, unless you just want to be extra safe, which I am never going to fault you for. Well, now you know how to feed your goats without the feed store. The next time you visit the feed store, you might feel a bit of gratitude for how easy that was, or you might be feeling a bit motivated to grow even more of your food for even more self-sufficiency. Either way, I would really love to hear from you in the comments, and I am so grateful that you found this interesting enough to watch this far. Thank you so much. Hey, thanks for watching this far. I'm gonna have more videos like this one up very soon. This one took me right at 18 hours to put together, so be patient with me. I will be showing you a lot more hands-on stuff this summer, but that's what it looks like outside right now, so I'm not quite there yet. I never imagined I would be the kind of person who didn't respond to every single comment, but I just can't, I can't at all. Just know that I am reading every single one of them and I appreciate you so much. And I wish you all the very best in your homesteading.